Hi, I'm Daniel, and it's really with my uh, general philosophy. It comes from a very um, collaborative place in meeting with people. It comes from a very compassionate based practice. I really believe in meeting people with in where they're at, whether the, whatever that may be, um, emotionally, psychologically. And a lot of my, I have different therapy models that I use, but a lot of it comes from a, uh, something called a Rogerian counseling approach. So it really, um, ha it has three basic approaches where it meets people at being very empathetic, have a, I have a very unconditional positive regard for people and I'm very congruent. So it means just meaning again, for people with where they're at. And so in that, there's also different strategies that I've taken um, from different uh, therapy models. So I really value a lot of the strategies and basic principles from narrative therapy. I also like to use DBT therapy. I like to use uh, CBT therapy. And I use a lot of um, strategies from EMDR, which is a specialized uh, counseling approach that deals with trauma. The populations that I work with, I mean, I mostly work with adults, but I also do work with um, children and teens. Definitely my specialties include working with anxiety, working through self-esteem issues, working through um, like sadness, frustration, um, also working with trauma quite a bit. One common question that I get from a lot of um, different people and different clients is a lot about um, thinking styles. So it could be anything from anxiety, it could be about negative self-esteem, it could be about sadness, frustration. And the common question is usually about how can I kind of change my thinking? And so I like to use a strategy. Um, it's kind of pieced together from different strategies, but it's about changing your thinking and uh, thinking differently. So I really like to ask people about if their thoughts and emotions, are they a fact or opinion? A lot of times people feel like their emotions and thoughts are facts because they're living it. But a lot of times if you can truly look at it, um, a problem, you can actually see that it's an opinion. I also like to use a time frame question. So how important is your thought um, today versus how important will it be in six months time? And most times people are like, oh yeah, my thinking or my emotions are super important in this moment moment but if they look at it from a lens of even next week or that six months time they'll find oh actually what I'm thinking about maybe it isn't um, accurate or maybe it's not relevant and I think especially for something like self-esteem which a lot of people come and ask me about they'll think that you know they'll have these thoughts where um, I'm a bad person or something and so or I won't be able to get through this tough time but if you use that time frame question um, they'll be like they can say in six months, actually, this um, this thought won't be true or in that time. So why I recommend the practice of mindfulness and why I think it's so important is it does a bunch of different things. Um, it's really important for helping people uh, be present minded. I think that's so important, say, for anxiety, because so often with anxiety, people are either hyper focused on worrying about the past or worried about the future. And so in practicing mindfulness and focusing on the present moment, it helps decrease that anxiety about one of those two things. It's also um, something that I've observed to be helpful for so many different um, difficult issues, whether that's anxiety or whether that's sadness or anger, but it can also be helpful for um, even helping with sleep. It's helpful for decreasing pain. And I, so I think it does so many different things that it's really helpful practice overall and it's something that I really value in my own life just to observe my surroundings and just enjoy that present moment.